Hello. All right, so we continue then. We are here in the pitch classes. I mean, we have to do the, the homework for Compo. So, Georgios, what was the homework for Compo? It was in ABA in pitch classes. Okay. So, just for the sake of uh, practicality, I will see first Laura because I have her here. So, pitch class sets. Here we are. Very good. Um, and then the audio is here. All right. So there we are. And we go for. Okay. Ready? So, when we take off the harmony, when we take off the harmony from the, the plot, basically the other elements of the music become far more um, important and necessary to show the different uh, the different elements you know, in the piece. So here the A is clear. The A is clear, but but as a theme, um, in all the things we have explored, sentence, period, hybrids, in all of them, there have been the, there has been a, a sort of quality of question and answer, right? In this one here, it looks like an elaboration of one single motif. Yeah, normally we have one or at least two contrasting motifs. Yeah. Now we are in pitch class sets, so in pitch class sets everything is a bit more relaxed. Yeah. So it's certainly out of dimensioning it well, and you did dimension it, it in a in a, in a way in which it, it works. It's clear that it's an A, B, and an A. Yeah. But the complexity of A and the complexity of B yeah doesn't match the complexity of the themes that we have seen before right so i would give it a turn by for example um one two three four five six seven eight yeah um yeah changing the rhythm here, for example, upside down, or I mean, depending on what you want to do, no. But this could be your your the head of the, your, the presentation, for example, and then this would be the continuation. But the thing is that um, as a presentation, the basic idea, the only difference between this and this and this is that is is the direction. Of the notes, yeah. Here I go up and down, and then up and up. So then, in that sense, the continuation is kind of the, so because you go up, yeah, yeah. It could be a fragmentation of this. I mean, I can justify it if I wanted to. Just, if it was my ex, my exercise, I could justify. It. I would, I could say, okay, well, I did. Um, up and down, up and up, then I explore up and up, ta ta, yeah, and then I explore down based on this, and I make it work, yeah. In a way, these uh, one, two, three, four bars resemble 
or magnify what happened in the basic idea here. But then that would mean that I am considering this a contrasting idea, which is not the case because if it's a sentence, I couldn't have a contrasting idea. Yeah. So in that sense, it's a bit, um, yeah, con con it doesn't reflect one or the other. Yeah. So I, I would go again on this one. I mean, what did you want to do, Laura? Let, let, let me let me let you speak a bit. So, what did you want to do? Um, I was just making sure I had a clear A section, a clear B section, and then another clear A section. That was kind of like the main thought process. Well, the A, the A section is clear, and the B as well. Yeah, in that sense, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But yes, you could have been more complex. The A and the, the A particular. The B no. The B is fine. But the A could have been more complex. In the B, another ad advice I give you is that in the B, it would have been good to operate a bit more on the accompaniment. Yeah? Just to make it a bit more contrasting texturally. Of course, it's very contrasting texturally anyway, because you made a, a big change here. Yeah? So it, it's okay. Yeah? But the accompaniment yeah, seems to be a bit homogeneous. Yeah? So it could have been a bit more um, intervened, yeah, intervened, but it's fine, it's fine. ABA are clear, yeah, I would go again on it and, and try to make A more complex. Why? Because that will help as well, one, two, yeah, six, seven, eight, exactly. That would help as well to give you more options, would help you by giving you more options on what you could do in A prima, yeah. If A is so simple, yeah, then whatever you do in A prima, it will be fine, yeah, because actually it will be fine, but it will be the same, yeah. On the contrary, if A has a a more um, complex sh shape, yeah, then A prima will be loyal to one or another character. Right, and then it, you you would be more of the piece would be more opinionized. Yeah, you could say, no, actually, I wanted to make a point on this and not on this other point. Yeah, here is like very very straightforward. Yeah, in, in a way. Okay, so who else? Hi, but let me make a case first. I mean, I have something to show you. Okay. But before I show you, because we show you and we talk about that uh, piece, etc. Before that, let me tell you about the pitch classets, why they're killing me. Because, okay. they're killing me. Uh, because I don't know them, basically. Uh, apart from not knowing them, <clears throat> I don't know how to use them, I don't know. Let, okay, we have the tonal system. We have chords, we have major, we have minor. I know when to use major, when to use minor, when to invert when uh, to use a seventh, when to resolve, when all these... Uh, but the pitch classes, for the most part, are random, and they're killing me. I cannot do something random. Of course, I can make some logic, when how much it uh, classes, to see it more counterpoint, uh, like, but that, so much information to try, while I compose to understand the new system, it's killing me, it's like giving me major minor chords and then I have to make something tonal. I, it, it wouldn't be possible. I mean, it would be possible, but it wouldn't be a brain. I cannot, too much information for me to handle. Well, let's go one, let's go one step and one step. What's the purpose of the pitch class sets? Why the pitch class sets exist? Why, why we rebel against tonality? Because in the past, we were always told what worked and what didn't work. Yeah? So we all feel safe. Yeah? That's, that's what Schoenberg is against. You know? He's, he understands it better than anyone else. But he says, I feel trapped because I can only do what is allowed. And if I don't do it in this system, I'm doing it wrong. Yeah? So then I can't do, I can't be artistic if I if whenever I do something out of the normal, I'm doing it wrong, yeah? So uh, in a way, the 20th century behaves 
or reacts to this saying we need a system that gives us elements that we can match with more freedom. We can mix and match with more freedom. And then a lot of different things arise. Free atonalism, serialism, pitch classets, etc. etc. All of them have the particularity of never of, of allowing you to do almost whatever you want and never be wrong. You yeah, never be against the common practice, primarily because there is no common practice, right? So it's it's in the so the anxiety that you that you feel, the anxiety that you feel is precisely inherent inherent to the system, yeah, because it's a system that doesn't give you a clear path to follow, yeah. What I did is like in those plants, in those roses, yeah, that you put a stick and you say to the plant, to the rose, grow this way, yeah. And at least you have that sense of direction. So what's my stick? The stick I'm giving you is do it with the syntax frame of the compound things. Why? Because I think you are too early to tell you just do whatever you want with the pitch class sets because you will feel even more anxious than what you feel now. <laughs> so what, what, the, the purpose of, of doing it, of disciplining the pitch class sets is to show you that you can actually make them work to say something, yeah? Besides not being harmonically, uh, besides not following the common practice in harmony, yeah? Just by following syntax, yeah? Syntax itself, it's like a, a piano etude, yeah? When you do, for example, we are doing rotation, yeah? We are just playing an entire etude on rotation. What does it mean? That we, we, are, we, we shouldn't play anymore with finger movement? No. It means that we are trying to make sense just using rotation, exercise number four. Well, this is the same, but for composition. I'm saying harmony. It means that we, we shouldn't... No, it means that only with pitch classets and only with this framing, we can actually make it work as well, depriving yeah, the, the, the framing from harmony. Yeah, you, it can still be... We enlarge another fact, another factor, sorry. We enlarge another factor. Yeah, in, in, and we leave harmony behind, which is quite quite audacious because you heard from my own words say, to saying that Kaplan actually based the paradigm in harmony, and I am telling you not to follow harmony. <laughs> so, but this is also to show you the power of the of the pitch class sets. Yeah, it's just to show you that you, you can even give the impression without the harmony. Yeah. At the end of the day, Georgios and all, all of you, you know. Uh, that's the biggest challenge and the biggest failure of 20th century music, yeah? The, sometimes this rebellion became nonsensical and the pieces didn't make any, it, it, they were pointless, yeah? I mean, no one could understand, couldn't understand anything, yeah? And that's, that's very sad, yeah? Because if someone has 100 people listening to your music and none of them understands why you, you place those notes in the score, yeah? Or, or no one can relate to the music yeah, because there is no common ground. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's quite uh, ambitious to say that it was a piece of art. Yeah. Nevertheless, if you if you at least can use borrow yeah from the tonal paradigm the frame, place the pitch classets, and be creative and try to make something they can still understand. So you, you spoon feed them. So that's a challenge here. <laughs> yeah. I get the idea. It's just I'm not sure when I am correct. You are so not when... sure. You are not going to be correct. That's the first thing that you need to well, embrace. Yeah. Then we will be correct when <clears throat> it is, for example, it has the structure I'm going for. Well, which is not easy. It's great because with this, you are at the mercy of judgment. You are correct if other people understand what you try to do. Yes. If you show it to me or to Laura or to Iris, for example, no? and they see the, the, the sentence, even without the harmony, then it's correct. If only you can see the sentence, maybe not. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. Mm -hmm. An exercise of communication. So le le let's see. Let's see. So I have done A. Because B <laughs> was impossible. I have a big A, 12, 13 bars. 
from this. One thing, one thing I want to say uh, that um, I heard a, a psychologist say two days ago in a in a meeting here with uh, very good uh, professionals. She said, because you made me remember that one with your question. She said, the artists want the validation of other artists. That's the objective of the artist. In really, yeah, the one wants to be validated by people that also know your, your skill. And we undervalue a lot the opinion of people who don't know our skill. Yeah. So that's why you feel anxious, probably, yeah, because you feel that you're going to be labeled wrong by your mm -hmm. peers. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, but then you have to do it with conviction. You have to be consistent. It's like when you do a mathematical equation to prove something. What does the mathematician needs to do? It needs to be consistent. It needs to land. It needs to approach. Sorry, the phenomenon from all sides, and then when he's subject to a lot of questions like the questions that you normally ask. You have a, a mind that is very inquisitive in that way. No, but it's, but it's good. It's, it's, it's really good because it, it strengthens your structures. Yeah. So you do to yourself what you, what your pieces will go through. And that's, that's amazing. That's really good. You never, you should never stop doing that. Yeah. So, but at the end of the day, is it the same as a mathematical equation? You, you explain, for example, the black holes. Well, but then a lot of questions arise. And what happens if uh, actually this is not, uh, I mean, we, the light doesn't travel uh, faster than, than the speed that we have at the moment. What happens with gravity? What happens? And, and then if it, this happens with gravity, what happens with the perception of time? And then you evaluate everything. So what's the equation that wins? What's the equation that is right? The equation that consistently answers all the different questions and all these different answers still make sense of your statement. Yeah, and if they don't weaken your statement. In the case of the phrase that you're doing, a far less ambitious enterprise, yeah, so what, what uh, the choices that you all make, for example, to make the feeling of a cadence, need to be consistent. In the other exercise that you've done for a couple of a month ago or when we started with this, you, you've used this, the rest as an element of a cadential element, yeah, you, or, or longer notes. Yeah, you, you were going towards longer notes. And you did consistently. So I, I think we all understood that the cadence was related to that. Yeah, That's fine. And you can explain what every time I use a cadence is this. Why? Well, because I stop the musical flow. And in the, the main purpose of the cadence in the tonal paradigm was also to stop the musical flow. I don't stop the musical flow by means of reaching the harmonic state of stability, because I'm not going to tonic, yeah, or I'm not going to the dominant as a as a as a, um, as a positioning point, yeah. But I'm going to rest. I'm going to a long note just once when I reach the cadence. And I don't, I'm like, you don't go to the, to the same point if I don't reach the cadence. Therefore, my cadence is related to that, at least within this piece. Then we will see if your cadence is related to that always in, in all your pieces. Yeah. That's the difference between writing a piece and creating a form. Yeah. What's the difference between writing a piece? What's the difference between Mozart and Haydn? Mozart wrote very good sonatas. For example, I mean, I'm going to say something very superficial, right? So take it with me. But Mozart wrote sonatas. Beethoven wrote sonatas. Actually, Beethoven was a bit more intrepid yeah, with, the, with the way he, he wrote Beethoven. So let's stick to Mozart. Mozart wrote sonatas. Hayden, Hayden established the way we should write a sonata. Why? Because before him, it was very embryonic. Yeah, it wasn't very clear. People were feeling like you are feeling with the pitch classettes. Yeah, what do I do with this? I mean, and they were doing different things. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, Haydn wrote 63 of them plus 104 symphonies and said, "Look, after having written almost 200 pieces in this shape, I can tell you that this is the best shape." Yeah, because it's very clear. Okay, thank God we took a, a weight off our shoulders. We just do that. Yeah, and then we explore other things, right? With pitch class sets and with all the atonal, the atonal world, yeah, you are always faced to uncharted land, 
Yeah, so there is no there is no Hayden there. There is no Hayden, there is no Ramon, there is no there is no Beethoven, there is no there is nothing we can actually uh, there is no it's more transcendental than, than that. There is no school. There's no school. Yeah, it, when I teach you composition, when, when I was taught composition, composition, not analysis, composition, I was taught by my maestro, we were all taught by our maestros, who showed us pieces by Beethoven. So this is a sonata. But we can't do that with the, with this paradigm. We can't say this is whatever. Because they are not seeking that. They are all miscellaneous pieces. Yeah, they are quintets, they are quartets, but they are, they are, they are, yeah. Okay, so let's see the piece. So, should I explain? No. Uh, the ending is very rushed, this. Uh, the structure is that maybe they're not, all the previous notes, all the notes, I really thought in front, I didn't write everything just because I didn't want to write numbers too much, but I think of everything. The last, no, the last is more copy-based. That's it. Lovely. Sound? Yeah, yeah, it sounds fine. Yeah, yeah. Interpolation. Interpolation, okay, okay, good, good, good. Let's go again from the beginning. Extension, expansion, many things. Okay, but this should have been, what was the... the... A, A, A. Ah, okay. Yeah, say so it's fine. I say it's okay. All right. So it's not an ABA. It's an A. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Interpolation. And then what's the purpose of this interpolation? You're going to use it later on in B, for example? Uh, <laughs> Why is it there, the interpolation? Because I mean, I can see that it's... Bad stuff. stuff. I thought I would add stuff. Okay, but okay. you add it at the end of something. You add it at the end yeah. of something, no? Because you have four bars and then... Yes, yes, yes. Basic idea, basic idea. Uh, continuation. Okay. Expanded continuation even, if you will. Interpolation, one more time, finish. But condensed continuation, whatever. Okay. A bit of cheating here. I finished with 5-1. Yeah. Yes. So, well, it's what happened. It's fine. It's all right. It's compo. It's okay. Uh, I would, I would, you may remember, Laura, you did the same in your piece. Um, second bar, I think. There was something that sounded tonal. I don't know what was exactly. I mean, pitch class sets can sound tonal something because it's just how the intervals, so if the intervals match, uh, uh, the intervals of a chord, they, they could sound so nice, no problem at all. Okay, so, okay. Play it again, can you? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, obviously, you don't have appoggiaturas, you don't have delays, you don't have anything that you normally have. Am I allowed to have appoggiaturas? No, 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 no. I mean, you don't have it in the paradigm itself. Yeah, you don't have it. No, it, no I mean, the, I'm not saying you didn't place them. I'm saying the paradigm doesn't come with those resources. Mm. But you have others, uh, which are the dynamics, which are the articulations, which are all those elements that you always struggle to place in your pieces. Yeah. Yes. So this is the very best platform for you to be obliged to use them. Because if you don't use them, there is nothing there that we can understand. Yeah. I, I want to deviate your attention when you uh, for the further development. I could of the minimum. I could, the piano. Yeah, I think the piano did, does a very good job. 
No, it's fine. It's fine. The, the piano is okay. I liked it. I mean, we would have been very, we would have been very flat if it wasn't for at least that. Yeah. But in these pieces, and if you check the other people who use pitch classets or any other atonal, uh, atonal paradigm, yeah, you will see they are full, full, super hyper crowded with articulations and dynamics. And it's not surprising. Because it's what adds depth yeah, to something that is not giving... Uh... Actually, atonalism means that it's a bit non-dynamic, in the sense, harmonically speaking. No? The tension is suppressed. It's like always disorganized. So there is nothing is pulling towards anything else, like the tonic and the dominant. So there is, there is not an inherent, an inherent sense of direction in the notes that we choose, like we, it happens in, in the piece. So the sense of direction now is delegated to the decisions that we make about the dynamics and the articulations. Yeah, so forte and piano, we want it or not, keeps sense of direction. Yeah, crescendo and decrescendo replaces not that sense of direction. In a way. Or even different sounds, different articulations. Uh, re always, we need to relate to history. In these pieces, when we started with this, this was the first uh, reaction to tonal paradigm, no? to, to take off the, the harmony. And the second reaction is to operate on timbre. So then people would, the first reaction would be to start doing other noises with the, with the other sounds, with the instruments. They would start blocking strings in the piano, no? In the, in the search for what? The search for other dynamizers that could replace that hole left by the, by harmony. Yeah? So, as you can imagine, I'm not a big, a big enthusiast of placing stuff inside our pianos. So then you can very well do with the, the, the pianos and the fortes and the mezzo fortes and the decrescendo and diminuendos and the articulation. Okay? So, so well, uh, work on that. Yeah? And uh, for the next time we see, yeah, we see the ABA. We see an ABA, right? So what was the, the homework for today was an ABA. That was ABA pitch class A. Okay. So let me review a bit the homework because I don't want to leave uh, untied uh, Beats. So, compound themes, Giorgios, you did very well. Yeah? So, you can do another two. I think it, they, it won't take much more time from you and you will do it next. Um, I mean, you will do it as well. Then, uh, Iris and Laura, do them again. Yeah? And this time be more orthodox. Yeah? Remember, it's an exercise. You know, so, just deliver the exercise. And, and if you need, if you need help, yeah? Communicate with each other, yeah, with Georgios as well, or with me, of course, I am here to help you, yeah. Um, but between Georgios and I, we can help you to, yeah, to deliver the, the exercise, yeah. Um, then we have um, this, ex this homework. So I've only seen, I've only seen Laura and Georgios, so it is. Very hard. I didn't have time to repeat the sentence. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Um, all right. So, okay. So let's see. Uh, we see the examples, the compound theme examples, right? Okay. Georgios, can you refresh me? I, I we, we, say, we, say, we saw 6-3, didn't we? Pretty sure it was 6-3, although you showed us from your score, not from Kaplan, so... Yes, exactly. But right. have we seen 6-3? I think we didn't see 6-3. I'm, I'm pretty sure we saw three examples. Yeah, but I think it was 6-4. Uh, okay, let me... Okay, I will start and then you... Um, let me see. Was this one? Yeah, no, was this one? Yes. You can see the score. Yeah? You can see the score. Again, again? I see the score because I can. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see the score. Uh, let me just show you the. I have it here. Just one second. I don't know why I have 63 Bs. 
I'm opening this call, okay? One second. I remember Georgios, yes, you're right. We saw 6-3, but it wasn't 6-3. It was another example that I was trying to, yeah. I will now show you the example, so I'm fine. I, I will give you the example that you didn't see. Don't worry. <laughs> That's fine. So let me, sorry for that. It's just that I commit a mistake with, with the labeling, yeah. That's it. Yeah, you did. You saw the six three that was Beethoven Beethoven piano concerto. That's what I saw. I I I said that was six three, but it wasn't six three. Yeah. So now I'm going to show you Mozart. Okay. All right. So let's share the screen and we start. Here we are. So the piece goes. Seen this. Sorry? I have a feeling that we have seen this or something like this, but I'm pretty sure it's this. We've seen this last time as well. We've seen this one already? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay, then we go to 6 5. Ready and go. recording and then we'll
Vas-y. So you can see the instruments as well. That's it. No, 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 yeah. Okay, so, well, we are in front here of a compound period, right? So, first of all, we can see the antecedent, which goes from here to the beginning of the consequent, which is obviously the, the 2t, yeah? Um, so, pa-pam, pa-pam, pra-pa-pa-pam, pri-pam, pi-pam, pra-pa-pa-pam. So, basic idea, contrasting idea, and then the continuation. Pam, pi-ra-pa, pi-ra-pa, pa-ra-pa, 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 Yeah? And then, with the orchestra. This is a very nice uh, example as well because it's, it puts, it makes, sorry, uh, use of the compound theme as an orchestrational device uh, because it allows a question and an answer, a complex question, a complex answer, yeah, from the soloist and as a counterpoint to the orchestra, yeah. So, let's go harmony first. So, Georgios, what chord do we have here? Sing, sing, tonic, and then... Pa -pam, pa -pam, and what Dom is it dominant of the second beat of the second yes, bar. Yes, precisely. And then dominant again, and then dominant again, and tonic on the second beat of the fourth bar. Exactly. Basic idea, basic idea, in second response. And then fragmentation. Now, harmony-wise, Let's see what we find. So let's go one by one. First, first bar here. Ah, huh? next one. First, yeah, first here. What do we have there? The fourth. The fourth. Then we have here. Tonic. Precisely. Tonic in the first inversion, and then we have here again. The fourth again. And it's something interesting that we should spot is that. Pam parim pim param pim param pam param. No, when he does that sort of uh, of uh, of gesture, when he in in incorporates this gesture, it works like an upbeat of the tonic. So in a in a in a way, it's like a passing chord. Yeah, it doesn't really make a statement of here. It's, it it lands here. Yeah, yeah. But even for the posture, no. And then, um, yeah. and then, second, second in here. That, but we need to label as well this to understand what happens. Okay. Here. Fifth of the second. Precisely. And then, what do we have? Let me think if it's do me. Uh, like, oh no, ah. fifth of the fifth, but. Uh, mm, um, we have okay, so fifth, fifth, small fifth, small fifth, or seventh, or whatever. Tonic, uh, tonic, which becomes the sixth. Tonic, Let, which becomes the sorry, sixth. Sorry, should I write it? What is it? Uh, yes, you can write it. You can write it. Uh, I mean, that this is the fifth of the fifth. Eh. This is the fifth of the seventh. This is the tonic that becomes the sixth. This is me, sol, si, re bemol. Fifth of the fifth. No? So yes. The tonic that becomes the sixth is where you lost me a bit. So the tonic is, you have, si, this, was, this was going to be this. This was going to be tonic. Yes. But it became a sixth. Ah, because you're living with sol. Okay, si, re, okay, and then, 
Si, do, re, mi, si, do, re, mi, fa, sol. Eh, ok. I mean, I could call it the sixth state away, but for a moment we thought it was going to be tonic. No, 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 it's tonic. It's tonic. Yeah, it's tonic because this is an appoggiatura, just because of what happened before. Yeah, this is certainly yes, an appoggiatura. So it's, it's, it's the tonic. And the then, well, it's... This one was on the, on the seventh, on the sixth, sorry. And then it's a six because you think it's a six because it's on sol and we're on si bemol, so it's a six. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, it won't, it won't help the analysis of the sequence, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's all right. Yeah, what? and then fifth of the fifth, and then... Fifth? You label fifth of the fifth that one, and then the fifth. Or seventh, seventh of the fifth. Okay. The seventh of the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would label as you label it, the fifth of the fifth. I like to label, uh, yeah, I like to label the seventh always, if I can, if we can, we should label always the seventh, the dominant, because it's actually, in, the grip is on the dominant, it's not on the side. So, that, that's fine. So you found the, the sequence. And ha having found the sequence in harmony, led us to see that there is also a sequence in syntax. But why do you say it's a sequence? Wait. Uh. It's a model sequence, no? When you have... So the second fifth of the fifth, fifth of the fifth, fifth of the fifth. fifth. Ah. Yeah, so the, the sequence is second, first, yeah, and then it breaks and it goes to the fifth. Yeah, you have a very small sequence of second and first tonic. The fifth second. of the fifth is the second, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then the, the first here is the first. Yeah, so then second and first. And these ones in this in this uh, pattern is these ones are heading into the other ones. Yeah, it's because they are in the in the weak beats. Yeah, for example, here this is on fa, so this is in the weak part of the beat. On the strong part of the beat, you have the second. Yeah, and then you have the fifth on the weak part of the beat. On the strong part of the beat, mm -hmm. you have the third. You could call this third to match the three, two, one. There's no C here. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, we could, but it wouldn't help the model sequence labeling in the okay. sense. Yeah, that doesn't align with the syntax. But, but, but this three, two, one. Yeah, three, two, one. With a, with a fifth yeah, of each. Okay. And then we do an elision. We do an elision. We say, this is the first model. Here, pra pa pa pira, pra pa pa pira, but this element here is part as well of the sequence that comes afterward. In that sense, it's fine. So you do model sequence and you do model sequence. Yeah? It's fine. Okay, so well done. So in that sense, we have antecedent for the whole thing. Why? Very easy, because then we have the same thing afterwards. So. No doubt about that. And then um, we end on a half cadence, yeah, on fa, la, do, clear, more clear, impossible, yeah, fa, la, do. Um, and then, obviously, we land in uh, si bemol, yeah. I'm not seeing Laura. Is Laura around? No. What? Um, Okay, so then we go. Oh, that's it. Okay. So, very good. And then we continue. So then we go into the consequent. That's it. Ah! Ah, okay, Hello. well, I will make a small, yeah, a small uh, introduction. So, Luigi... Franco Luigi Hello. from Buenos Aires. How are you? Hello. Hello, Franco. Can you see us? Yeah, yeah. I can see you. Okay, we can't see you, but it's fine. I guess. You cannot. Um, let me see. No, no, no. The camera is working, but I think you put it backwards or something like that. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, fine. Good. So, well, let me do a short introduction. So, Franco Luigi is a fresh uh, graduate from the Pontifical University of Buenos Aires, uh, and one of the best universities of South America to study composition. And he's going to be the, the teacher in charge of orchestration. Yeah. 
due to his uh, knowledge of um, of piano and and the way we learn in Buenos Aires, he will also be auxiliary examiner, auxiliary examiner of piano for grade five below. Yeah, just to have a, another perspective on our students. Okay. So that's why he's joining today the Scaramuzza Technique actually session that we have afterwards. Yeah. Uh, so, so well, he will be with us so he can, he can see what, what are we focusing on and he will be there with us in all the Scaramuzza Technique things. Yeah. All right, Franco. So I put you in context. We are doing something here. Uh, yeah. You can see, you can b b remain as a spectator if you want until we start with Scaramuzza. We are doing a bit of analysis, uh, uh, following the book of Kaplan. <laughs> Of musical forms, okay? Okay. Yeah, you can be here or not, it's up to you. Yeah, but in Scaramucha will start in 15 minutes. Okay? Okay. Good. So then we continue. So we go to um, we go back, yeah, to the, the the to the heads, talking about heads, we go back to the head of the theme, where it's a studio this time in charge of the orchestra. Yeah, which is very audacious because actually Beethoven in this concert, in this the third movement, he actually made the piano go first instead of the orchestra, which is quite uh, quite audacious. Normally, it's the orchestra which has the ritornello, the famous ritornello that we haven't studied yet, that we will study in when we finish with this module. The ritornello is something typical of the of the con of the concerto form, yeah, and basically it's a summary of of the of the exposition, all in the tonic, yeah. Uh, emulating the the recapitulation, but at the beginning, yeah, and that's by default the way we normally set up all the all the all the movements. But in this case, Beethoven is naughty as always, and that's this other way, and it's and it's very nice actually. So, and then we have um, then we have what do we have? So let me let me give a bit of word to Iris. Iris. So, tutti, what happens harmonically speaking? So, in here. So, we're back to the tonic. Back to the tonic. Pa 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 yeah, So, this is what? It's like, I mean harmonic or... No, 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 I mean, yeah, because you, it's only one chord in the harmony. So, uh, what, what... It's do we... basic idea coming. Very Returning. good. Very good. And then, pa 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 pa, pra pa pa pa, what is it? And the repetition. Yeah, repetition of the basic idea, very well done. And the statement response. And then you have. Pra pa 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 pira, pra pa 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 the continuation. The continuation. Okay, let's let's dig a bit further. Yeah, let's dig a bit further. So we stick here, right? We stick here, and then we go back to yeah. So let's see if we can. I will make it bigger. See, can you see it well? So. Uh, we go from here. So, okay, it is. I guide, I guide you a bit. Yeah, and we do it together. So, what is this one? Which one, sorry? This chord. Harmony. In the harmony side? Yeah, harmony, harmony. Yeah, yeah, harmony. Oh. So, that is. It's tricky, it's tricky that chord. Look, I'm not sure. Leave that chord behind and tell me what chord is this one and then we go back. So what chord is this one? I mean, that's the G7, uh, the G7. This is the 7? Okay, we have. We have Do, we have Sol, and we have Fa. Ah, I'm looking at the previous one. No, 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 Sorry. this one. So, okay. Then I, then I will, uh, yeah. will see why I ask you to do that first. So, so this one, Do, Sol, and Fa. What is it? Do, do Sol, and Fa. No, sorry. Do, Sol, and Mi. Mi. Yes, this is. Yes. So for me, this is the second? Yes, this Mi is do. the second. This is the second. Very well done. 
if this is the second, can you label this one in relation to that one? Yes, it's the fifth. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> very well done. Yeah, so the fifth. Georgios, can you do something because I don't know how to do it and it will take me a lot. Can you just place the chords there for me? So this is the fifth of the second, right? And it's the fifth of the second in which inversion? In first. In first inversion. Well done, Iris. Okay, and then I will go with Laura. Yeah, so we don't need her to bore there in watching how we analyze everything. So Laura, what chord is this one? Um Si no. fa re si fa re Is it just the tonic? Yes, it is. Very good. Very good. And the one before, well, uh, Georgios did for you. So it's fa fa do mi bemol, fifth of the first, yeah. So what are we seeing here? It's nothing else but again the same uh, the same way of, of sequencing the the, continue, the the fragmentation. But I want to see yeah what happens particularly here yeah, when the profile changes. Yeah. So I'm going to go and ask you about this chord. Sorry, this chord. So Fa Si Re. What is that? Fa Si Re. The BDF. Chord. BDF, yes, the C, very good, the BDF chord, but in this case is the tonic in the second inversion, no? Profiling a perfect authentic cadence. Pivoting, no? So then on there you pivot for the perfect authentic cadence, right? Good. So I will ask you then another question which comes as a, as a product of this, which is what's this chord? It's the same. Mm -hmm. And but in a different no it's the same it's the same but we need yeah sorry we need to see this chord fa do mi oh, um fa do mi it is so the second but with a look we had look think about think um try to anticipate it Anticipated. If it was a perfect authentic case by the book, yeah, we would have first in second inversion, and then what do we have? At some point, if it's a perfect cadence, then it'd be a one in root position. Uh, yeah, but in between, a five. Yes, exactly, exactly. Very good, very good. So, what is the first in the second position? The first in the second position is nothing else but the preparation of the dominant in root, isn't it? Fa, Si, Re, Fa, Do, Mi, so it's same roots, yeah? And then from there, you make the skip to the tonic, yeah? That's the, that's the normal, perfect authentic case. So, Fa, Re, Si, yeah? Fa, Do, Mi, and the language. Yeah. Sorry? The language, eh? Ah, the language, sorry, the language, the language, the language, the language. So, uh, B, sorry, Laura, sorry, sorry. So, uh, also, careful Franco as well, eh? Uh, always the, the letters, yeah? So then B flat, D, F, yeah? Sorry, I'm confusing more than what I'm helping you. The root is F. F, so then F, um, exactly, F. Then we have, let me, I will read from the score so I don't make a mistake. So then F, B, and D, root, uh, sorry, uh, tonic in the second inversion, F. B and D, right? Mm -hmm. F, B and D. We prep the dominant in root position. Why? Because the dominant is F, A, C, and in this case, because it's the seventh, we D. So then we keep the same root and we have C and E, right? And then from there, we leap to the tonic, yeah? So that's a, a, um, an allowed leap, yeah? And that's it. So then going a bit backwards, yeah, and seeing everything. Georgios, can you do me a favor? Can you just label the cadences so I can show everyone where are the cadences and then... Yeah, I'm not sure about that because... This is not a perfect cadence, this is a half cadence. Uh, no, it's... Uh, I mean, it has. Look, I will I will show you as he sees it. It is almost, but this is the fourth bar or whatever there. 
no, it's not the, it's the um, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. No, no, it's fine. It's in the right place. So uh, look, papam. Let me just go to the here. It is. Okay, look. So we have why is a perfect authentic cadence under the spectacles of Kaplan because he sees this as a predominant chord. Yeah, so then he sees this as a predominant chord, and then this is the beginning of the final statement, which is complete. Yeah, and then we label this perfect authentic cadence. I would argue it stops here. Eh? Where do you would like to stop? Here. Why? <laughs> okay. Because that's where, that's the 16th part. Well, yes, but yes, yes. Unless... But syntactically, but syntactically, Georgios, we need it. I mean, you can't group this, this note with the following beat. Maybe. Elision. Okay. At I least an elision. At least an elision. Yeah, at least we should allow an elision. Yeah, let me just put something in my camera because I, I look like the Holy Spirit. With the, so let's see, that's it. The sun there. Uh, so yeah, it would be yeah, it would be like um, an elision at the very least. Yeah. So all right, now cadences, glorious. So we have perfect authentic cadence. We have half cadence. While we have it, let me just move out. Let's see if when I move out, you know, no, when I move out, your your notes uh, disappear. Okay, take off the yeah, take off the notes. Let me move out so we can show the entire thing. There we are. All right. So just label, label then, for me there. Well, how do we label this? Do we consider this a cadence with a tonic, or here? Okay, so the difference is the difference is that in here, in this one, we reach the cadence here. In the fifth, this is obviously a sort of post cadential uh, binding element. Yeah, this is it's nothing. It doesn't have anything to do with the with the motivic elements from before, does it? Yeah, it's it's certainly a binding element. Yeah? So that's why it differs. Yeah, in in the other case, in the perfect authentic cadence case, we are carrying with us the motif uh, until the end, yeah, until the lesion, where is the lesion, yeah? So, there we have a half cadence. So, for a period, Laura, what do we need for a period? We need a basic idea and a contrasting basic idea. Yes, sorry, but I... I I ask you again. So, what do we need, cadentially speaking, for a period? Um, a half cadence. Very good. A half cadence in the first statement and in the second statement. A perfect cadence. I will ask. Very good. I will ask you another question. Can we end on a half cadence in a period? Can we have a final half cadence in a period? No. No, we can't. We can't. So then it's, it's easier to spot. It's half cadence, perfect authentic cadence. I ask you another thing, just to review. Can we have a half cadence in the end of a sentence? Yes. Yes, we can. Can we have um, a half cadence at the end of the presentation of a sentence? Mm, no. No, no. Very good. Can we have a perfect authentic cadence at the end of an antecedent? No. No. Uh, very good. Very good. Okay, that's fine. All right. So, review. Let's review the homework. Let's review the homework. So, Iris and Laura, just another one. But all of you are just another one. Yeah, for compound compound things. Uh, for compo, for compo, strict compo. Write down, please. Yeah, because then I forget and we don't know what to, what to, how to follow. So, and also that that helps you to follow more. Yeah, because. 
Okay, you know what's, what's happened. So, um, for Georgios, finish the ABA. For Georgios, only for, uh, for all of you, but particularly for Georgios, um, dynamics, articulations, uh, tempo fluctuations. I want to see that in your pieces. You need to do it. Okay, and particularly, it's particularly easy in pitch class sets. Okay, so for your ABA, explore more that. You start it, doing it very well, but more. Yeah. Uh, for Iris, well, for Iris, you have to do it. Yeah, because you didn't do it for this week, so you do it for the next one. Uh, for Laura, the ABA, it was fine. I, uh, your ABA, I can't say that it wasn't, it didn't fulfill the, the requirement. It did. It did. Yeah. So why I'm asking you to do it again? Just to, Complexify it a bit more, complicate it more, yeah. So you can deploy more, yeah, of what we you learned before, yeah. But this one we can check it done correct, yeah. Is correct. Just a bit could can be more more developed. That's all, yeah. So the the three of and the three of you, the three of you, the same I told to Georgios in this paradigm with which which what gives sense of direction is actually the dynamics and the articulations. So you need to use them consciously. Yeah, they are not ornaments as before. They they have thematic value in here. Okay, the same the rests. The rests also acquire a different dimension when we use pitch classets. Yeah, they are like like they are always music, but in this uh, in this context even more. Yeah. All right. All right, so we are going to just do a two-minute break, yeah, three-minute break, and, and we go to Scaramusa. Okay, so we start uh, 20 past, okay?